I've been in the men's home like five times since 2013. Yeah. And the first time I ever got depressed was in this whole music thing. Like you just, people just feel like it's vibes when, you, when they say things online and they don't know it's really getting to you. I remember on your song with Get The Info, not your song, but you, um, Fino featured you on the song with yeah. Files. Get The Info, you mentioned you wanted to be a lawyer, but Nigeria showed you Shigi or something yeah. like that. What happened? And um, a lot happened, man. I I, I went to Unilag and lecturers were it's yeah, they stressed <laughs> me, man. And every time they stressed me, I don't like stress. I just okay. bounce, man. Like, <laughs> I said you dropped out like five times. How did yeah, that work? I dropped off. I, I was at um. I first started with law. Yeah. Then English, then uh, psychology, then creative arts. Then I had a meeting with my mom after all of this. She sat me down like, yo, your father's side, you, they don't finish what they start. And That's she was deep. like, yeah, <laughs> is your father's family, you need you know? to finish. <laughs> so I think she enrolled me for Open University. Mm. It was the most depressing thing ever. Like every time I go for their exams, like the atmosphere was just dull. The, the people, no offense to anybody, but it was not, it was not, it was not giving. It was not it making wasn't sense. Giving what it was supposed to. So I dropped out again from low. I, I just, I got tired at that point. Or I didn't get tired because I really don't see what I'm doing with all these things. And then um, I finally finished uh, from was school like that but i want to talk about it <laughs> but like why law did you pick law or was it was it picked for you because oh, yeah uh, i always wanted to do law growing up because i my friends used to say i argue a lot yeah i, I feel like i always win every argument so i always just wanted in. to do law yeah so Would I, you? music was not the plan mm. yeah so i was it was law that was that was the passion that was but when i met music i'm like ah why did I see this on that side? Uh, yeah, so but I don't think I would I would want to do law. Yeah, nah. But would you like consider yourself an activist though? For like standing for the people. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, definitely. I fight for the people. Love definitely. Because like I said, the song that I mentioned before, it was definitely like an activist track. Yeah, that was that was the first time I did something like that. It was mm. Fido featuring me on Files. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, he just he told me what the topic was. And I was fighting for my people. Mm. Did you receive <laughs> any backlash for it? No, nah, I, I, I came for the people. I was for the people. Mm. So obviously, but yeah. No, because I know that a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of like celebrities and artists are always scared of like speaking about, you know, things like this because, oh, what if yeah. I don't get government jobs or like what if you don't hire me to perform at inauguration and things like that. So was it something that... No, nah, man, was it, man? Maybe for Fido, maybe for Files, maybe they would, but me, I'm... I always just uh, I say what's on my mind. I'm not scared of whatever, whatever. What, they don't even like me on Twitter because if they come for me, I, you have their time. I respond, to I have their time. <laughs> yeah, so they, I don't think they even like me there. But yeah, I'm I'm coming down now. Like if you saw me, I might just look at you and move forward. Just walk up or like before, I had people's time. Yeah, but yeah. So I do. I don't. I don't think I got any people even praised me for the verse. I got three Eddie's nomination for that verse. For that verse, yeah. Ooh. So crazy, Love that. yeah. So I think you should introduce yourself. We didn't yeah. Oh yeah, I'm Fido. Uh, best rapper alive. Child, we didn't give her ad libs. So oh my god, okay, I'm again? sorry. Yeah. Let's do that again. Introduce oh, yeah. yourself. Though, <laughs> you know what? Backup singers by yeah. profession. Y'all can book oh, us. Yeah. Just the ads at the bottom. Ready? <laughs> so, introduce myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we right. got you back. We got your back. I go by the name Fino. Fino, 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 Fino. Wow. Fino, Fino. <laughs> <laughs> you like to do our echo. Yeah. <laughs> you said you're the, the best, best rapper. rapper. In the world. I mean, that's what I used to say that. before. What do you say now? Best rapper. Alive. Yeah, but a lot of people do like that, so I kind of stopped. I mean, yeah. if you're confident you like someone it. to listen to the people, yeah, do. but I mean, there were people that could help me. There were hey. other rappers. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to your helpers, you so I just, I just had to let it, let it go. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I still say it was a while. So now speaking of rap, yeah, because I mean, like I said, I, I've known you for quite a bit now. I think 2014 yeah. when you performed and I was telling her it was Shuku Shuku Bam Bam that you performed. Yeah. And then 
I listened to your recent music or I listened to your recent music. Mandem. I know you dropped a yeah. song now, Mandem, I loved it. Yeah. But I have to say that the phenom of like nine years ago, it's your rapping word, style yeah. is not the phenom now. I know that as like artists, we evolve yeah, and as definitely. human beings, we evolve. But the phenom of then and the phenom, phenom of then was like, Hardcore, like Gaga, like I feel no more nice, like soft, calm, like just jai. Is, is that just, good or bad? No, it's a good. That's why I said you oh, evolved. Yeah, so, yeah. like, what was the how Transition. did it happen? Because you literally went from like hardcore, like and yeah. you're like, oh yeah, like oh, you're more mellow. You yeah, can be very mellow, like very Gen chill. Z. Like yeah. I'll take Gen Z vibes oh, now. Yeah. Like, gonna listen, yeah. Which is weird because I feel like back then your stuff was like. Hard. Also quite it's hard Gen Z. Now you're more like old Tay where it's mm. just vibes and yeah, the vibes and inshallah. I'm just I'm enjoying Tell you myself. Play, I'll just be cruising on like let's yeah. play just be like, oh, yeah. It's, you know when you even turn off the AC, you put the windows down, the windows <laughs> <reduce. laughs> like actual just cruising, like, yeah, what's yeah, up? Like, yeah, so uh the music, as far as the music is concerned, like now I just when I go to the studio, wherever the producer plays, I mean if I'm feeling it, I just record on it. Or like then it was just okay, give me rap. And I feel like I've watched uh, a lot of guys out there. Okay, let me just start from the scratch here. Yeah. So when I joined that house, I was just this hip hop head, yeah. And uh uh if you're not making rap music, then I, I I don't think I was exposed to other sounds. So if it wasn't rap music, I just look at you like what's this one doing? On intelligent music. And I feel like that's where a lot of hip hop heads have their head ha at. Sorry, yeah. So uh, I watched Mo Cheddar record that entire album. I watched Whiskey record in Night House as well. I watched a lot of guys come to the studio to make music, and I started to um, I I, I started getting exposed to other sounds. Mm -hmm. Do you get so? Oh, I started trying out what they were doing. I brought it. I'll see these people recording five minutes. The next day, there's a hit everywhere. So I started tapping into or tapping from other sources as well. Yeah. And right now, I feel like I'm just, I'm just chilled. I still have songs where um, I'm going hard. Because this thing you said, they, they said it on Twitter that this is not the film we know. Mm. And I'm like, okay, the next song it's going to be the hardest verse you've heard in in, in, in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I meant that. So I still have songs where I'm rapping, but right now I'm just on that chilled vibe. And yeah. So my name is something that was just chilled. And I was just chilling. Making Soft boy it. energy. Yeah. yeah I don't, I'm, I'm not that same guy. That's the truth. Like then I was suffering. I was, <laughs> so the music, it was telling me the music. Like, yeah. So I'm not, I'm, I don't have that energy, but I can still, be on that Give energy. No, I mean, me. I think it's fine either way, to be honest. Like I said, human beings evolve. Yeah, it's nice to show like versatility that, oh, I can word. do this here and I can do that here. So, I mean, I really yeah, love yeah. that for you and love Mandem. Can't wait to see oh, what yeah. we have. Can't wait for some visuals, so, some videos. Let's we got you on backup. <laughs> <laughs> so, now let's I get mean. into it because like our focus today is like the entertainment industry and like mental health. Oh, and yeah. I know that you've been pretty vocal about, you know, being in the entertainment industry and like with your mental health and yeah. let's start with this do you think oh i well do you think the entertainment industry takes a toll on like celebrities and people in its space and do you think we the, it makes any measures to help out of course it does like I'll, I'll be very um i'll be 100 in this interview because people are always asking where is phenom blah 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 mm -hmm. nobody knows what really happened with me so yeah um uh, this industry is crazy man i've been to like i've been in the mental home like five times eh, since 2013 oh, wow. and the first time i ever got depressed was in this whole music thing like you just people just feel like it's vibes when you, when they say things online and they don't know it's really getting to you although i had my own um i made my own mistakes as well i used to get high a lot and yeah mental health it's crazy what musicians go go through man it's really really crazy um uh, yeah so i had to at some point stop smoking to help myself because it was smoking um, yeah it was it was the triggers yeah i had to stop smoking i had to stop i had to stop getting high in so i'm 100 sober right now and uh, yeah how many years now 
I quit smoking 2015. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's eight years. Yeah. Yeah, so. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. The music industry is messed up. Record labels have their issues. Um, the fans. I remember one guy. Imagine you as an artist. You put, like, at the time, we put, like, 10, a $10 million budget on a song. Right, we're about mm -hmm. to drop this song. Then now the budget is obviously more, and then one crazy fan just messages you on Twitter and says, "Yo, I'm about to leak your song." They don't know was what was okay. gone down. Was going to yeah, going to it, and then you wreck somebody's plan of tip. I remember that 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 chat, and I was telling this guy until he leaked it, and he was doing it out of love, but. That's it just love. messed up an entire year for an artist. Do you get what I mean? So mm. the fans also have their they're crazy, they're crazy, man. And at some point, I feel like I think 2015, if you come to me for a big track, I feel smash your phone. I was just crazy at that point. Yeah. Mm. So So you feel like the fan the fans, sorry, pay also a large yeah, part yeah, they in do the a detriment lot. of the Yeah, you see this David O whiskey thing. These guys would just they would be cool if the fans were doing all this nonsense. I actually think that they're cool, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I've said that with... Uh, I don't want to go into details, but... I'm really not going to be 100% real with us. <laughs> no, with myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, but so, you can hint at it, Cha. Uh, artists don't really like themselves, and it's the fans that cause it. Do you yeah, think? I know. It's the fans, because... But, do you not feel like as adults, like you're an artist, and yeah. me and Oinda, we say that we're creators, we're... Um, yeah. we're in, well, content creators, right? Yeah. I feel like if somebody was to say to me, oh, Oyinda said this, or if I was to go, okay, we have a podcast together. We get yeah. trolled. People mention we things in the comments together. and stuff. People yeah. say things. And I never think, oh, let me listen to the comments. Like, I might call Oyinda and be like, oh my God, have you seen this? X, Y, Z. And then we'll just, and it's a conversation between me and her. And it has nothing to do with the fans or has nothing to do with the people, even though they're the ones that have instigated that conversation. Yeah. So I feel like as much as fans play a part, we also should be mature enough to be like yeah, hey but you know where the fans are saying like real stuff is actually real so like you know mm. that they're legit like they they know what they're saying they're not just talking mm. do you get so if a fan says this is just an example it's, it's not nothing if a fan says oh whiskey and uh brother boy sang about Bellion door boy it's very bad that it's performing at Bellion door Mm. They say things like that. Whiskey might see as a fact, which is a fact, and then start seeing Rema and they say in light as a threat or something. Do you get what I mean? So yeah. it's just things like that. Do you get what I mean? So it, it creates a very toxic environment for uh musicians and yeah, so real life. The next musician doesn't want to help the next musician, not because it doesn't want to help the musician. I was telling her something some weeks back like uh in every other space she's in tech in mm -hmm. every other space uh they help each other because i yeah. see her when she's um but in, in the entertainment world bro <laughs> oh, you gotta get it yourself yeah so nobody wants to help you why do I, you think that is i really don't know i mean i'm I really don't like that so it's surprising like if i if i see talent if i see a way i can help you yeah i will but I don't know why. It's just like that. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to ask, you know, you said in 2015, you, like, you, how do you, you said you were depressed, right? Yeah. Crazy. How did you even, because I feel like depression is one of those things. It's not like a cold. You know, like you wake up and say, oh, my nose is blocked. Yeah. I have a cold. I'm not feeling well. Like, how do you even able to realize and say, hey, I think I'm depressed? Because I think oh, even in depression, there's <laughs> forms of denial and all these. No, nah, my, my was clinical. So it's not, it, it wasn't a mood. Some people, some people are not really depressed. They're probably going through uh, mood swings or mm. whatever. So my was, I was diagnosed of depression. Like, mm. yeah. How are you diagnosed with depression? Like, um, okay, um, so there's something a lot of Nigerians don't know, and I want to say that so nobody looks at me like a madman. So, technically, 70% of Nigerians are psychotic, yeah, because uh, all through your life, you might never experience an episode, but if you are, uh, what's the word? <sighs> Sorry, if you are, I don't know the word to use, but if you are open to your triggers you might yeah so, so sensitive 
Yeah, not not even no, that. Not like if you, like if you get her, if you oh, okay. let's Exposed say this, yeah, exactly. So, uh, the first time I think I noticed I had issues was uh was from a breakup. It was really oh. bad, and I didn't even. It wasn't that deep, but the next time I think twenty thirteen, I had an episode, and I didn't know what was wrong with me, and I got rushed to the hospital. The hospital they didn't even tell me enough for me to oh, be aware of they just treated me and i went back to my normal life getting high and but i still really didn't understand what happened and i think 2014 i had another episode and i was rushed to the hospital my mom was in nigeria at the time and she rushed me to the hospital and it was really crazy and then i was diagnosed of uh, psychosis and bipolar disorder due to substance abuse mm -hmm. yeah so uh so i got proper education on it i had to what do you know what's crazy is i actually went blind like in the process like i couldn't see and i so, you went blind i went blind like my eyes like gone so i think that was what made me take a step back from music like okay let me fix myself i'm not this people are not gonna let me ruin my life because the highness was because of music to be honest mm. and i was always because i was always in the studio and i was always getting high just making music and i think that's why even whiskey liked me because i was just that guy so um yeah I had to get, I, I was educated about what I was going through, and I had to, it, I still didn't stop. It's, it's a crazy addiction. Even after going blind, I, I remember I would still call my doctor like, yo, I have to smoke. Or, and he said, you know what, if you have to smoke, just smoke, but you know you can't continue. Just after this one, just try and calm down. So he helped me with the process of stopping. And yeah, yeah, so basically that's it. So I was, this withdrawal symptoms depression is one of the withdrawal symptoms from um uh, what i was going through yeah so i was proper depressed i was thinking of suicide every day for eight months it was crazy it was the worst period of my life but i thank god i'm out guess what brought me out of depression music no like a woman snapchat what? hey i swear snack gang. <laughs> i swear because when, when, when i took a break i did on the, i did uh I was away from everybody. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Snapchat just was popping at the time. It was a it was a new app. And then my first post, I just saw everybody viewing me and it just gave me so much joy. Like, oh, I'm still, still out here. Yeah, I still saw some guy. big names. Yeah, like view my stuff. And I'm like, oh, I and I was praying to get out of that mood for a while. And that was like the answer. It was crazy. My first post. Oh, but I started posting like 30 <laughs> a day. Like, oh my God, started reaching out to me. Where have you been? Fill up, blah, blah. And yeah, I was in my shell at the time, but I started coming. I came out because of, of that. I started meeting people again. I started linking up. And yeah, that's it. Um, Real quick, just to get clarity on something. When you say you had an episode, do you... Uh, <laughs> like how did so for people like you said a lot of people are not exposed yeah. to their triggers yeah. and they don't know so maybe a lot of people also are not really educated especially because of how nigerians as a whole or how we used to see mental health i feel like it's now that we're becoming yeah. more aware that yeah, mental work. health issues are actually you don't need to have a broken leg for you to be sick you could actually work. have yeah. certain issues so for people who may have had these episodes or similar episodes were not aware that okay this is something that i need to go to some people just say oh i'm having a panic attack maybe i just mm -hmm. need to calm down or relax so i'm having this like how did the episodes play out how mm -hmm. did you know that yeah well, i'm in trouble <laughs> i need to go to the hospital oh boy it was crazy man like your body is doing everything your brain is i mean how do i put it your brain is your body is doing everything your brain is telling you not to do so as psychosis is crazy like i know other guys like when i say oh i had a psychotic episode or i've had psychotic episodes they start telling me theirs so it's 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 it's, it's the worst thing it's even better to be blind than for you to have psychotic episodes i remember the doctor telling me oh the difference between me and the madman on the road is i have a family that's are um, involved yeah because for the no, first crisis i want to also start like a foundation to help these guys on the road because these guys are just 400 naira tablets away from sanity like 
a lot of them are not really they're okay it's, it's not that deep do you get so if mm. they take a drug and eat well and sleep well they'll be fine so um with the episodes i had i had proper episodes i i made my episode i feel like everybody should know you guys will know educate me no, i like oh, yeah. to like so I, I mean, it's episode. a proper madness like you're going crazy like you're smashing everything i, I was in south africa the last episode I had was in South Africa. I went for, I was supposed to perform at Big Brother. I couldn't even perform because I had an episode. I came, I went from Kenya to South Africa. So I was really stressed. And uh, I had an episode. Bec- and that's the thing I had quit smoking. But other things could trigger it. Yeah, like I was just extremely stressed and I needed sleep. And my manager was, was, we just started working at the time. So when I kept on saying, I need to rest, he wasn't getting it. Until I got to that point. So uh the episode in South Africa was crazy. I was I was in a penthouse and I was I smashed all the glasses down. I took life, I was chasing my manager. <laughs> it was crazy. We laugh about it no, now, but no. it really wasn't funny then. And I remember they had to uh f- uh fly me to another city because I needed like uh more professional doctors and the was they were not that or uh, whatever Specialists. yeah so it's crazy but we don't see episodes in jesus name Amen. <laughs> so in all of this where was your record label but my record label they i don't want to say this but um, uh, they contributed a lot to my whatever man like i remember i had another episode because of them i think the the second or the third episode i can't remember and uh, it was just messy because the label, when Mocheda left, there was no money coming in. And I was a hot rapper at the time. So I was always getting uh, deals. Like people were just throwing deals on the table. So I'm like, okay, since the label doesn't have funds for this. And I wake, I think I woke up to, uh, what's it called? A letter to Fidel. And so, okay, this, let me let me just start from the scratch. One day I was on the bed and I woke up to a letter to fill up. I thought it was the, fa- the f- bro, I, have, I don't think Whiskey has, has much crazy fans as I did. People would tattoo my name, even Whiskey at the point, it tapped into my fans because the rap community, they weren't really fucking with Whiskey at the time. I, I know for sure that they tapped it because we made like three songs together back yeah, to back. I like and the way. Then, yeah, thanks. So, uh, yeah, so I had the craziest fans, man. Like, my manager used to say, ask me, like, guy, what did you do? What is, what do they like you this much? And then one of these days, I woke up and it was a letter to fill up. So I thought it was something positive. So I just even retweeted it. Like, oh, these people are coming. I, I retweeted it. And the next day, someone asked me, oh, did you read the context of this thing? And it was just one fan just going off. Like, oh, yeah, we didn't stupid record label you have three songs with whiskey no video blah blah and it was just going off i just see you trekking all around you the lag you are you have a car it was just going off and this, this thing almost started trending I, I think before you before the main trend it shows uh trending in lagos and then um uh, someone hit me up like did you see what you retweeted i'm like no so i went to read it hmm. damn i think my my girlfriend at the time was with me in, in the room and she just saw my mood change and uh, she was like, what, what, what? So I showed her, she read it. She just, she, she said, I didn't know music was this deep. She said, yeah. I thought you guys would just be in the studio, make music and drop it Shut and up, we're man. all just happy. And coming around me, she saw that it was really deep. The, when she goes with me to the studio, the meetings we have, like she sees that, man, this is serious. It's more serious than she thought. And then, um, uh, what was I, sorry? Um, your interaction with your label. Your label. Yeah, the label, label had yeah, yeah. Added and then, so w- I went to the label, I told them, yo, we can't keep going on like this, which it wasn't their fault because when Mocheda left, there was no fault coming in to push the music again. So uh, I was like, you know what? I have a bunch of guys that always want to 
uh, drop body, yeah, but they just want to take me off the label. And I'm like, you know what? I'll talk to one of them to put the money into the label. So I, I met this guy at around the time, which is crazy. It was on this same street where where about when, when I was driving here. I just remember remember his his office was on this same street. So, um, uh, I told him about the label it wasn't down with putting money in the label I'm like yo this label they have a structure sir you don't have a structure i can't come to you just put the money here you make your money back blah 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 then i use like i use mods to plead to this guy mm. he finally agreed and when, when he said putting the body into the label oh i think i i trusted these guys like my brothers at the point and they would tell me the context of some contracts i wouldn't even read. this is nice house yeah yeah so i'll just sign on because they were like my brothers and oh boy they were moving funny they started taking money from the guy in my name behind my back i didn't know a lot of stuff that was going on mm. and when i found out it was already late like and i just broke down i remember i had i made a call around three in the night and i asked because i was talking to the guy over the phone and it was like um ah I did this now. I gave them this and blah, blah, blah. I told you those people don't like you. Hmm. Blah, blah. He, he just told me and I called them and I was expecting to hear, oh, it's a lie. And they said, yeah, we did that. Du, 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 du. Oh, wow. And I'm like, okay, all right, makes sense. So I even told uh, one of the guys, I was like, okay, so how do we get out of this contract? Because I'm like, okay, you guys have done the most. How do I get out of this mess? And they were like, oh, you can face it yourself. Don't worry. I swear, this guy Physically told me left that. You hanging. They left me there. But I, I mean, when I entered the record label, I was 16. I had my own car, right? But I mean, I'm going to a record label. I just left my car at home. I'm like, okay, let me go and hustle and make money. That that was the dream. That was, that was the vision. Mm. So I think they probably just saw me as a street boy that they could just do anything to and at the end of the day oh i'm like oh so these people are not really with me yeah. and then I, I i told my mom my mom is an iraq police officer she's like you know what they've done it don't worry she got me a lawyer the lawyer got me out of the contract contract and then i just messaged them like it was even less than a month i got out of the contract i told them because i was battling with this whole thing um the hospital thing at the same time so the stress was crazy uh, that year so i told them and they were like i think the guy was even sad i got out of the contract hmm. and um uh, after i told him do you know what these crazy people did they called me again for another meeting i gave me another contract no. to, to start, my <laughs> after they were to renew the they me back again That's and it. i'm like okay since it's just because they said one thing, I oh, feel we're getting emotional, it's business, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, since it's business now, I read the contract. I, I didn't see brand new car, brand new house, brand new. I said, ah, this contract. I signed this same contract five years ago. I'm not the same person anymore. Like, there has to be something on the table. Since it's business, mm -hmm. yeah, the contract wasn't, I didn't even take it personal. Oh, God, I didn't take it personal. But I'm like, okay, business now. This business is not business. So I just, Cut I think it. I bounced. Yeah. So, uh, but me and Gobi, we're still cool, even if it's fake love. But <laughs> what can we do? I swear. <laughs> it's fake love because me, I'm very real. I'm 100% real. Like, I don't know how to hide my mouth. And I don't, I don't lie. I do not lie for, I'm not scared of anybody, so I can't lie. So, uh, I go to him for advice still, like, okay, I'm trying to do this. And we plan stuff. And when it's time to execute, it just goes funny. Like, mm. it just... So I think the last time he did, he has been doing that for years. And the last time he did that, I just called him out, like, bro, we're adults. Like, if you are not effing with me because I didn't get back with you guys, bro, you say it straight go. up, let me move forward. Don't be coming at me like you like me or want the best for me where you clearly don't. You get so... It's just been that, man. And record labels, I've had other record deals after that just because of my experience with uh, 
that label have been scared to like sign with uh, another, another yeah i wanted so, to ask sorry yeah. so i know whiskey at one point approached you yeah. and you were oh the label even told me whiskey that was helping my life they told me to be careful somebody that was helping me for free so i mean he approached me at some point like mm. we, we had this great chemistry mm -hmm. right he wanted me on his team he said he wanted me he wanted me and him to work on my album mm -hmm. and but i was with the label mm -hmm. so i'm that i'm that loyal and I, i remember i asked my mom like oh this is what is on, on ground my mom was like no you signed with these people finish your contract with them so i just you know like, okay my next five years is with uh these guys Like These guys, you get me. So that was that was what it was, man. So even when whiskey came, all that bro, even whiskey's deal was not what whiskey had on the table was not as pleasant as many other guys. I know that Olamide know. as well. Yeah, yeah, me and Olamide had the conversation as well. Yeah, but a lot of other guys, like I had a deal of 100 million at some point. A G wagon, some crazy. I had crazy deals. Wait, so do you regret the whiskey one? I Olamide? honestly, if I if I If I look at it, I'm not gonna lie. The only regret I don't have is the fact that I was on that fast life at the time. So I could have crashed. You mm. get me? So I see it as a blessing as well. Like, I don't know what would have happened. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So, but when I look at it, I'm like, damn, I should have taken that whiskey <laughs> pee. I swear. When I look back, I'm like, yeah, but I mean, that's so good. Is whiskey still your boy now? Is that your. Uh, I, I think I was in his house so shortly before his mom passed because I'm there are a bunch of boys in his house so I have other he's hardly around but I have other guys that stay in his house that mm. yeah but we're not definitely not as close as, as we were yeah, yeah. so um, quick one do you still because I mean like so now now do you believe in loyalty to a record label oh but right now man, I tell people I tell upcoming artists Man, if you're with a label or you're with anybody, don't let them treat you like, oh, they're doing you a favor. Because at the end of the day, it's business. If you don't pop, they'll drop you. And that's it. So if you're popping, you need to treat it like business. It's the same way you're... I mean, like, if you sign a contract, I don't advise you not to um, finish your... What's it called? But if you weigh it and the business is not profiting you, my brother, get your lawyer and get out. You get so I'm big on loyalty because loyalty is not just business. If I get married tomorrow, I expect my wife to be loyal. So I'm not going to say, Oh, if I'm G get, don't be loyal to me. Loyalty is, but you need to apply your sense in whatever you're doing. G you get, you need to weigh things out. Yeah, so that's that's how I say. Um, okay, now to tie it back. So obviously, because like I'm also like really big on like talking about the mental health, and I really like yeah. that you're being very open and like yeah, vocal and honest it. about it. Because a lot of people go through these things and they're not able to speak. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that fans definitely. I can't. I'm not even going to ask if they contribute to like yeah. being an artist and like having mental health issues. How do you think that artists can mitigate how it affects them? Because we were having a conversation prior to this, talking about how oh different people have different like styles of responding to trolls some mm -hmm. people would yeah. give you basketballs basketballs some people will reply you with their finsters some people like yeah. me i'll just ignore you to be honest but it's easier said than done that's Work. the thing yeah. how do you think that artists because you can't avoid having fans like you said you have good fans you have yeah. even like k-pop stands they have what they call anti-fans they have regular yeah. fans and they have haters as an artist now how would you or seeing what you've been through yeah how would you advise an upcoming artist or other artists how to mitigate the pressure that fans put on them uh i mean if you can ignore it's the best yeah mm -hmm. but i think over time i've developed like a thick skin if you're not used to it at the beginning you get used to it right now nothing moves me like absolutely nothing and bro nothing actually moves me and i feel like it's because i've seen the most you get so like nothing actually moves me i've i've worked my mind to that point where nothing affects me if you like talk from now to tomorrow and when i dropped this man them song there was someone from many years ago i think it was a fan he's a dj he kept on going on he was going on for hours just insulting me i just look at this guy and 
just dumped my fool out. Look at his picture. This guy is looking hungry, so he's all looking like Jige. So, like, I'm not going to be bothered you by you someone that's not eating Jige where I'm in. So, I'm really just, if you, if you know how to uh, develop a thick skin, there's a book, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. You need to read that book as an artist. So, I genuinely do not give a fuck what anybody says. It's before that, I'll see letters to fill up. And I'll be crying. Today, somebody insulted me self on my way here. On my, uh, what's it called? Instagram. I did, I just read this. What was the guy saying? The old film, this new film is, I just looked at it. I didn't even tell the person I was sitting beside because it, it's become normal. So you just have to develop that thick skin because you know what's crazy is, okay, there was one time I went party with Rogan, the prince, and, uh, even if they don't come at you online, they will come at you in person. They do? Yeah. And as an artist, you're supposed to be Jesus Christ and just overlook things. I remember when, it was when Ruga first had his first number one. We went, uh, we went clubbing and these fans just came because it was hot at the time. These fans just came and they just came. They were extremely rude and... The priest said, are you a fan or a predator? Like, what kind of approach is that? That they were like, ah, we are fans now. But, but why are you approaching like a, like a predator? And they actually just ignored g -Gets. And I, I learned from that because me, if you come at me like that, <laughs> bro, what you give I'm awful. Is this club that is covering you? I would... <laughs> I will have your time. <laughs> I swear. Because why would you, if you, it's, it's bad enough online that you call me person attacking um, an artist because, the, first of all, the artist doesn't even know you like that. You might watch the person 24 7. So it's strange when I see a stranger just jumping up. You guys, I don't know how these people picture it in their <laughs> head. You just see somebody, the person doesn't know you like that. You know the person, you've been watching, you need to understand that the artist doesn't know you. If you see David O now, if he comes here, he's seeing you for the first time. You might have seen him a billion times or you get what I mean. So you just approach the person like a madman. And, bro, so the artist too is on his. Um, is 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 God honestly is God. yeah. So whatever you see, you collect at the same time. So <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I mean, okay. I, yeah. So. I have a question to ask. Yeah. Um, like your mental two things actually. Do you feel like when you were going through your mental episode, going having yeah. your having those stages, the up and the down? Do you feel like your artistry friends were supportive, or do you feel like? People found out that because I think bipolar is quite a serious. It, it's yeah. serious, and I feel like, for me in Nigeria, I think there's almost as we Nigeria. I feel like Nigeria is still being introduced to mental health, and I yeah. feel like we accepting it in smaller doses. And something like bipolar isn't a small dose. It yeah. is also it's actually a really big thing. And I think if you even go into the depth of bi bipolar, like so many different things can, cause you spoke about triggers. Yeah. So many different things can trigger it. But like, how do you like your, your friends who are artists, do you, do you feel like they were supportive of you? Do you, or do you feel like they just felt, mm. Oh, he's going through something cut. And then when you're popping again, they'll be like, Oh, Hey, what's up my guy? Like, yeah. were they supportive? I mean, at the, t at, at the time, I feel like this was, I think I had my last episode twenty. I was in South Africa 2018. Yeah, that was the last time I had my last episode. But uh, when, it, when it first happened, I think I was by my, I kept to myself. So I wasn't telling people. But it's now that I'm, oh boy, it's nothing, man. Mm -hmm. I even laugh about it. Oh boy, if I get episode now, I will just, you get. So it was, at the, at the time when it was happening, it was, it was all funny. I wasn't okay. telling anyone like, but now I think, I know, I actually know the, there are positive sides to it. And uh, I know that, oh, it just takes, ex it's, it's people that go through that, they just, it's just intelligence on another level. Your brain is overworking. So I know, I know the positive side to it. So now I say it to like, uh, I think the closest person, I'm, uh, the closest friend I have in the industry is uh, Fido. And I just say, say it uh, randomly. I don't think he, he sees it that deep. But sorry, I'm just like, Fido. I yeah, <laughs> it's my it's my guy guy. Like it's the one that evil it was the one who forced me to drop my them as well. So uh it was a good force. Yeah, good come job. on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I just say casually, I tell um uh, check as well, like oh, boy, 
maybe I I I be a psychotic or watch how you are acting. Mm-hmm. But I just say it like mm-hmm. to destigmatize it. Like yeah, you're ashamed so, of it again and there. At the beginning, yeah, it was when you don't know you. you, you I've, I've I've grown up to this level, and all of a sudden I'm crazy. Do you get? And I was new to it. Uh, it was kind of embarrassing. Like I told Fiki, yeah, and they just laughed about it. And yeah, so I'm like, ah, let me not go and say this thing outside. Look at the reaction I'm getting from, from my friends guys. before they think, um, yeah. But I mean. Um, psychosis and uh, what's it called? Whatever mental disorder anybody has is it's it's like having malaria. You're not crazy all the time, so it just comes. That's the episode. Kanye West is not mad twenty four seven. He just has episodes. Yeah, that's it. I understand these things because I'm I've been through it, mm-hmm. and I wanted to say something. I don't know. I don't want any backlash, but this guy, what's his name, Mobad that died. When I was watching these videos with, with the Naramali thing, it was clearly psychotic. It was clearly psychotic. So Naramali kept on saying, you know that thing that happens to people when they smoke and they just keep running their mouth. He said, because I've been following them since like 2000, two, like two years ago. Mm. The first time Bobad came online and he was talking like that. I was talking like that as well. So... You recognize the mental Yeah, health. then your mouth gets dried up and white. So... It was, but what, why it led to whatever it led to was because, I don't know, the family, go for be poverty. And yeah, so there was no education, no nobody to tell him, bro, you need to l- let this weed, health. yeah, you need to let this weed down. Because the more you smoke, and what's crazy is, because uh, I, I, I went for therapy for like an entire year. So my doctor educated me and I'm taking other guys there for, uh, therapy as well so he told me it's like hiv leading to aids so if you don't stop um allowing the triggers if you keep allowing the triggers it then goes from psychosis to schizophrenia an episode of psychosis marks maybe three days dead schizophrenia if you have proper schizophrenia before you can get well again it's like two years Hmm. do you get so you don't want to get to that point. So mm-hmm. I feel like a, a lot of, it probably wasn't enlightened enough because mm-hmm. he just kept on going. And yeah. I know. Be? I know you mentioned that the origin of all of this was due to substance abuse. Yeah, but not really because I, I had like the symptoms I had, yeah. Before I started smoking, I had this break up with a girl okay yeah. so i had mm-hmm. this the same symptoms but i just felt it was this chick that i was with mm-hmm. yeah but later i started saying that oh igbo would so, so let's let me say it triggered it yeah, exactly let's say it like it takes trigger. it from 10 to 50 g yeah yeah but like was this before because okay you had to break up let, let me let me phrase it this way i know you said that like substance abuse yeah. triggered it now yeah. You've said it before that, oh, you, you were living the fast life. It yeah. helped you, you know, have energy and yeah, all of that. Now, let me ask, would, did it start before you entered music? And then do you nah. think that, okay. It was, it was all music, it drugs, all music. even drugs. I wasn't doing drugs before music. I don't do drugs anymore, though. I would, but it was all music, man. Like, but what about like artists now? Because I know a lot of artists say that oh, they needed to. A lot of creatives yeah. generally say that up. oh, we yeah. needed to, we need to boost up to tap into our creativity. Exactly what I was using it for at the time, and I always tell people something when I say they say I overdid it, which is cap, yeah. Because when I started smoking, uh, I started with just puffing. You get, and I I remember the first time I smoked, I made my first hit so i felt like igbo gave me my hit song so i kept on going back i i i did murder them with whiskey it was igbo like i I was so high that they were holding me in the studio to record so i always just went back to because i felt like that was my source do you get so if you smoke if you smoke now and you think um is that you're not gonna abuse it. Wait till you start really moving. You will see that you can't do without weed twenty four seven. You will just you will just keep going. So I went from one stick to two sticks to seven sticks because I was 
bro from here you go for another interview you need to get high before you talk from here you have to hit the studio so it was just you always just needed it do you get what i mean so what every time i see people smoke and i try and say hey you know what this thing did to me see nobody in this life liked weed the way i liked weed nobody and every artist i was in the studio with i never met anybody that smoked the way i smoked right i've been in the studio with everybody you can mention anybody i've been in the studio with Burn up boy, i've been in studio with burner they don't, they don't they didn't smoke the way i was smoking the only back person then. i met what back then yeah the only person i met that was smoking on my level was jesse jags yeah so what was, what was what was I even driving? I forgot. I don't, don't smoke weed. What we yeah, because of yeah, exactly. If so, when I went for my therapy, when I remember when my doctor told me you need to stop smoking after I went blind, I laughed because I'm like how. So I was just here. Yeah, I wanted him to just treat what was going on with me and let me get back to my life. But it was like, nah, you need to stop. And he educated me like if you don't stop, it's gonna lead. It's gonna go from this level to this level mm -hmm. you see how you start seeing after this long it's going to take years before you see again blah 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 so uh it took uh the doctor educating me about these things and then i said okay what was crazy is i was first time i met the doctor i was calling big numbers like i lost this money i lost that money it was he said are you trying to impress your girlfriend yet i'm like impress my girlfriend was like, he actually lost all this money and he didn't know I was fed up. So he said, okay, what do you do? I said, I'm, I'm an artist. He said, okay, uh, what's your name? I said, fed up. He went crazy. Like, huh? You dropped the song yesterday? I said, yes. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> I said, he said, you dropped the song yesterday? I said, yes. Best rapper I said, yes. It was, it was like, oh, everything makes sense now. I said, you see why I can't live weed? It was like, I get it. I said, this weed is my life. Like, this is what gives me music. This is what. So it was like, no, it's not the weed. I argued. And then I made a song without, uh, after I did my nine months, whatever, I made the first song and I dropped it. It's still banged. I'm like, it's not weed, man. It's, it's, all you. it's, it's me. me. It's phenomenal. You it's but me. Weed just has a way of giving you that confidence. Like, mm. you think it is because when you are high, you can say whatever is on your mind. You don't give a shit about. Yeah, so I did the job and it was, it took longer than when, what weed would have done, but, oh boy, it still smashed. Yeah, the song, the first song I did without weed was, uh, what's it called? Uh, Shadow Wally. And yeah, it was crazy. And I think, YC came out with Jagaband then and I I know it disturbed them because we rappers I think Olamide was on the radio and that it? was an era oh. yeah so I know I, 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 I long I story bad. short man from the same era Come again. As I forget, you and YC are from the same era. Mm -hmm. like, the, YC came no, after uh, me, YC though. came after because yeah. I knew YC tapped in like university. Yeah, I was yeah, it was Finom a unilag like, as well. Yeah, yeah Finom was like before well, YC. Fam, I know yeah. you, like I know you guys from around the same era. So mm. was, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, shout out to YC. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I have two questions on art. You know? yeah. So now, what? Since you don't smoke anymore, you've been sober for eight years. What do you yeah. use for your ginger? Do you just wake up Me? and say, "Let's go"? Oh, uh, what cooked mandem? <laughs> mandem. <laughs> With it. Uh, I don't. I don't use anything. Like I. I just play loud music. Um, once the music is loud, like my neighbors can hear me disturb. I'm writing. Once it's loud, I. Yeah, I mean, like when I first stopped smoking, I tried to use lights like i'd set up lights in the house just to give me that hallucinating thing so i could yeah i tried different methods but now i just feel like what's the music i put my jbl or my my big jbls on my ear like this and i just write yeah so once the music is loud i'm good a different yeah. kind of loud a yeah. different <laughs> kind of loud yeah just vibes well, um I have one thing to ask you. Yeah. You've spoken a lot about your mom, and it seems like your mom has been a real pillar throughout your yeah, whole career. Yeah, I like to think so. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, like, she's my Do you my feel guy. like your mom has really been your rock throughout? Oh, uh, yeah, she's a strong woman. I didn't grow up with my mom, though. Like, I lost my dad before I was one, so 
She was always traveling. Yeah, but when she's around, yeah, she's my guy. You see me? We're not very close, so we quarrel a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but we're good. We're good. Oh, what's crazy is when I was even doing my therapy session, she came with me for one of them. And <laughs> she just, you know, African moms now uh, in front of the doctor, she was just shouting, You smoked again? I didn't even smoke. She was, you smoked. <laughs> so the guy looked at her and said, I think, madam, you need therapy as well. <laughs> yeah, next. <laughs> she took it as an insult, like, Are you saying I'm crazy? Like, hey. yeah. So, I mean, she's my guy. Like, I love her so much. Yeah. Shout out uh, to your mom. Shout out to my mom. Mom. Yeah. What can we expect from you? What's next to come? Uh, yeah, I'm working on an EP. Yeah, I'm working on my EP. Dropping uh, when? To be honest, I don't know. Next though. year, soon. Next year, hopefully, yeah. This year, probably, yeah. I'm not sure. Are you going to give yeah. us visuals for Mandem? I should. I, I think don't I, wanna... I, I don't know yet, man. Because... I think you should, to be yeah. very honest. Oh, I yeah. feel like this to be honest, I feel like works. Why... Oh, yeah. I feel like Mandem is the weakest song on my EP, to be honest. I just dropped it because it kind of had, like, I was preaching. Yeah, but the the the, the, the next song is just straight to the point, like... Mm. You're warming us up for us to come. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to start on, on that low uh, tempo, yeah. I don't yeah. think the tempo was low. I think it was calm, but I don't calm, think it was yeah. I think it's very, it's vibesy. Like, I would yeah. put it on and, like, this drive to mainland. Yeah, I'll but... Just chill. Like, it just gives me vibes and vibes. Like, word. and I feel like that song is kind of a reflection of you now. Like, you're just yeah, in vibes. Right now, nobody word. can. Nobody no should stress you. I just want peace. Yeah, yeah, nobody should stress me. I just, just want peace. Just yeah, that's my vibe like, right now, to be honest. It's just vibes. Yeah. Talking yeah. to that people can heal. Bro, that doesn't mean you should provoke him, Sha. It doesn't mean you should provoke him. I don't ask them on Twitter, man. I have people doing that. Yeah. The mob. Don't stress me. It's been a pleasure. Like honestly, I feel like if I'd met you ten years ago, oh yeah, like well, you know, it was privilege. You performed in a school. Yeah, I feel like if I'd met you ten years ago, yeah, ex- and meeting you now, like there is a clear involvement, yeah, big, yeah, and it's, it's nice. Big. Like it's a, it's refreshing. Like, and for an artist, yeah. I feel like because. Your lyrics now as well, they're more relatable, but you also give me very Gen Z vibes. And oh, yeah, I know that you're not well, a Gen Z. I should be needing yeah. to ask you now. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but like, are you guys Gen Z's? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, you performed in school. Yeah, so I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was gonna ask you, like, I'm well, if I performed in your I'm school, how old are you? Gen Z. I swear, but no, it's nice. and I mean that in a very positive way because I think sometimes for artists, if you're a decade old it's hard yeah, to not be definitely. relatable to the current yeah. you know the last generation. time I saw you Olami Day was like this guy you be vampire no, you know for they real. old yeah, no, I was gonna I say that I saw it as a compliment yeah no, I, was gonna I think say I even look he younger than dead he needs to drop his skin care honestly yeah. it's for you <laughs> Honestly, I was going to say that to be very honest like, because I do. I remember. I think we took a yeah, we took a picture, yeah. and I can't. I can't forget where you. I think you were all black because we had like black t-shirts and stuff that we did turn down yeah. forward, and you wore black. And then we took a picture, but I don't know. I have to find it's been like a <laughs> while ago, <laughs> almost ten years ago. But yeah, so yeah. you didn't age. Yeah, share, I think so, so, man. And I, I, I work out a lot, yeah. so yeah, so I now. think that's another thing I do. So rather than get high. I go to church, I speak in tongues, I work out. That's it, man. I love it. I love yeah. it. Oh, I love so, that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the health side. I'm, mm. I'm just trying to be healthy. Yeah. What gym so, do you go? Where can they find you? I use iFitness. Uh, so, some of them always come to my gym. I know there is me they're looking for. <laughs> so, people come, I swear. So, people come to find me in the gym. But, yeah, it's all good. That's Honestly, good. it was a pleasure having you on today. I'm Certainly. so happy you were yeah. very open and honest with us. And I, I definitely do know that a lot of our audience, it's not just, people are not just here for the gist. A lot of our audience will also be able to take a lot from what you've said. Yeah. And yeah. if they feel like they can relate to some of your experiences, yeah, hopefully well. seek help. Word. So it doesn't get worse than what it's yeah. already is. Thank you so much for coming and Thank we look forward to seeing what phenomenal phenom- coming soon. EP phenom- phenom- dropping phenom- soon. Phenom- album coming, coming soon. soon. Y'all wait for it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know the dates. We'll be on <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> we'll come and see and love it. Yeah. Well, guys, maybe we'll have you when it comes yeah, out. Then you can talk us like how you did the album. So you know, I like, mean, I need that my backup since you yeah. need any. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> we got you. Yeah. We can do like one two step. Not big choreography. Like just something light. Yeah. I don't usually move like that. We'll introduce you do like split yeah. fingers wow <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, thank you it's been amazing so yeah. Yeah.